Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of Let's Paint a Mini. So what we're looking at right here is uh, one of the Doom guys from the Doom board game. This is Alpha. Uh, here's a little picture of, uh, here's this card right there that comes with the game. So we're actually going to be doing a color scheme that's going to be similar to uh, the, uh, the the picture there. So we're going to be doing kind of, a, uh, kind of an industrial gray uh, with some red patterning. As you can see I've already got a uh, uh, a coat of pure black on there. Master Series paints pure black. By the way, I'm going to run all the colors across the screen at this point, just so you know uh, what colors we're going to be using here. It's going to be a really light palette, actually. We're not going to be using too much. But the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the actual armor pieces, that is to say the uh, the sort of white uh, sort of armor. And to do that, we're going to start off with uh, this rainy gray color. It's, uh, it's faded off on the bottle here, but this is rainy gray on a little plastic there. Okay. Alright, um, and I think that for the sort of design that we're going with today, we're just going to make sure that we're really careful about all the things. We're not going to be doing so much of the dry brushing, we're just going to go over each individual sort of armor piece with the gray, and we're just going to go from there. By the way, I didn't say this yet, but I'm using my Master's Touch brush here. This is uh, my, my good handy 12-0 uh, round. Master's Touch brush. I do like these brushes quite a bit. As you can see, we're just getting the knee right here. And there's a lot of there's a lot going on with this miniature. There are a lot of little tiny armor pieces, and it can be kind of daunting, but as long as you just take each piece, you know, one by one, each little armor piece one by one, I don't think it's gonna be too rough. You can see these little sort of magazine holsters, little pouches on his thighs there. We're gonna leave those alone for now. Don't be too concerned if you get uh, if you get some paint over them. We are gonna go over them with a different color later on. The nice thing about this type of mini is just make sure that you take your time when you are doing all the little armor pieces right there because there are little a lot of uh, little tiny notches and, and creaks that uh, can be easy to to muddle and you just want to make sure not to muddle them and uh, you know just kind of like leave a little bit of a gap in between uh, in between each armor piece and that way it'll give the mini a little bit of some depth if you just go over the whole thing with gray like this then that can uh, that can really muddy the whole thing up just kind of blend it all together and that's something that we want to avoid Probably need to get some new brushes here soon. I've uh, I've used the brushes that I have here quite a bit, and uh, the more you use these brushes, the more the bristles kind of start to uh, get kind of flayed and just kind of uh, uh, the, the bristles are not quite as tight together, and that can get kind of kind of tricky. So yeah, make sure you know don't just use the same brushes. Uh, all the time, non-stop, because that will lead to uh, that will we that, that will lead to uh, less and less detailed brushes, and um, that can lead to um, not necessarily worse paint jobs, but it's going to make painting a little bit harder. So, you know, just make sure that you've got good, decent brushes that, uh, that you can rely on. But as you can see, he's got what look like kind of little holes and little pieces of his armor, and you just want to make sure not to fill those holes with the gray color. Leave those black, and that will give some depth to the mini, and that's something that we like. Yeah, that's coming along. That's looking, uh, that's looking okay. So over the weekend, I went to go see... Uh, Alien Covenant with my dad. I was talking about that in the previous video. You know, I liked it. I, I did actually enjoy it quite a bit. It was it was nice and different from uh, Prometheus. Uh, it was kind of its own thing. Sorry about that. I had a little bit of a technical difficulty there. I, uh, I need to turn off my air conditioner whenever I do these videos because the, the, the noise of the air conditioner can, can really get... Uh, uh, it, it really just 
pierces the microphone. Well, rather, it doesn't pierce it, but uh, it, it, it gets picked up by the microphone and uh, can make it a little bit harder for me to be understood. Anyway, like I was saying, I went to go see Alien Covenant, and I liked it. I, uh, I thought it was a... It was a pretty decent, uh, you know, really kind of a slasher movie in space. That's kind of what it was. Got It had the real thrills that uh, I think a lot of people were looking for. Now, in a lot of ways, it, it actually is kind of... Uh, it actually is kind of a shallow movie. It's really, really simple, you know, uh, slasher movie plot where slowly each person gets pecked off one by one, but uh, there wasn't really a lot going for it in terms of originality or anything like that. It did follow up the events of Prometheus uh, fairly enough, which I know that Prometheus was, uh, was really divisive to a lot of people, but uh, I thought it was okay. I didn't, you know, I didn't love Prometheus, but I thought it was an okay movie. But I did like Alien Covenant more than Prometheus. I think that uh, uh, it was it was a lot more visceral than uh, than Prometheus. Prometheus was kind of cerebral and more attempting, I guess, to be sort of thought provoking and uh, all that. And this movie does that a little bit, not as much as Prometheus did, but. Uh, all of the other qualities of, of Covenant, I think, were pretty good. I think it was pretty well handled. Yeah, it looks like this mini is really not, not too bad to paint. It's just, uh, it's just something you gotta be careful with and, and take your time with, because you know, there are a lot of individual little armor plates here, and you just want to uh, take your time with them and not, not muddle them together. But if you do each one separately like this, it'll really bring it out. And that's that goes back to the key of, uh, of mini painting that I always stress, and that's that it's all about patience. Just be patient. Take your time. There's no right reason to, uh, no reason to rush anything. You're just here to kind of relax and have a good time and just kind of uh, get into a happy place psychologically. Sometimes I would um, sometimes I would take long lunches from uh, from where I used to work, and uh, I would come home and just I'm not kidding I would just paint minis for you know uh, 15 20 minutes and head back home after that and. Uh, that was a really good way to kind of uh, get through the day for me. It was something that was that was really peaceful to me and and helped out a lot. So yeah, sometimes I, I think that painting minis is just a good way to kind of you know take life easy. Sorry, it's kind of hard to show every piece of armor that I'm painting without. Uh, uh, without getting in the way of the camera. So I was talking about my buddy Ben in uh, in the last video about how much he likes the uh, the the Predator in the uh, the Alien movies, and uh, I guess he's really big into the uh, Alien versus Predator franchise. And apparently, I haven't talked to talked to him about this. this is just something my uh, my fiance Riley was talking to him about, and she she told me about it later. But I guess he didn't really like. Alien Covenant very much, uh, because it kind of uh, threw out the idea of uh, the Alien vs. Predator franchise, which is something that Ridley Scott has made pretty clear that he doesn't really like that franchise very much, which, you know, I think is kind of a bummer to think about, but, uh, you know, every every artist is, is able to do uh, what they want with, with their vision. And uh, I think that if Ridley Scott wants to keep the uh, the Alien franchise or the current Alien franchise out of uh, the Predator franchise, I think that's something that he's allowed to do. You know, everybody can do their own different things with uh, with different ideas and all that. Whoop! I got a little bit of paint on his arm there, but that's okay. 
Uh, but I think that Ridley Scott is definitely in a position to kind of make whatever calls that he wants to with the uh, with the Alien movies. You know, being the guy who, who created it in the first place. I mean, Alien vs. Predator only came into uh, only came into being because basically people liked aliens and people liked predators and they thought let's put them together even though the uh, the alien had nothing to do with the predator with the time that it was made this video might go on for a little bit longer because this one is one that you're gonna need to take your time with more it's not it's not like The Imp, which was my first uh, mini painting video that I did, actually. It's not like The Imp, where you can just kind of take, uh, you know, single colors and just go over the entirety of, uh, you know, the arms and legs and torso and head and all that. You gotta get really detailed with uh, with this mini, but I, I promise you, if uh, if you're careful with it, then you're gonna you're gonna be happy about it in the long run. But yeah, if you uh, if you went and saw the uh, the new Alien movie, if you went to go see Alien Covenant, you know, let me know what you thought of it. Because I didn't think it was a perfect movie by any stretch of the imagination. Again, I think that it was really at its core just kind of a uh, a well-made, you know, science fiction slasher flick. But, uh, you know, uh, for that, you know, for that simple premise, I think that it was executed pretty well. And uh, I was pretty happy with it. And let me know if... Uh, what you thought of it, if you were disappointed, or or if you loved it, or however you thought, because everybody is, uh, is allowed to express whatever they want about different movies. Sitting here with Riley right now, my fiance, she's in the background for the first time. I've done all these videos by myself before, but uh, she was very, very nice to indulge in what I like to do and let me do this. She's just been watching, uh, well, it looks like right now she's watching Lewis Black. He's funny, I do like him. I apologize if I laugh in the middle of the video. <laughs> she says she apologizes if she laughs, but uh, I don't think that's going to get too distracting. I think you'll be okay. <laughs> Nothing wrong with hearing a little bit of laughter in the background of things anyway, too. I mean, it just helps to lighten the mood. I mean, people always said laughter is contagious, and you know, I agree with that notion. Not just in real life, but, you know, on TV and movies and stuff, too. Laughter is contagious. If you're hearing other people laugh, if you're noticeably seeing people having a good time, you tend to have a good time yourself. That's why sitcoms really like to have laugh tracks, because... They know that uh, if a person hears laughter, it tends to uh, make them laugh more frequently, too. Or more frequently. <laughs> uh, it tends to get them to laugh a lot more, too, I guess. But, uh, Riley, what did, uh, what did you think of Alien Covenant? Sure, what? <laughs> oh, she's got headphones in. Uh, what did you think of Alien Covenant? Uh, I thought it was terrifying, <laughs> and um, Michael Fassbender's a <laughs> not to ruin it. <laughs> uh, yeah, we won't get into we won't get into spoiler town there, but, uh, but yeah, Michael Fassbender does uh, reprise his role kind of uh, from Prometheus. He shows up as a new android called uh, called Walter, and uh, you know, and again, I'm not going to spoil anything, but Walter. Uh, uh, sure is a, a an interesting character. I did like him quite a bit. He had a weird accent, though. Oh, yeah, Riley was just saying he had a, a weird accent. Which, uh, I did kind of notice. I mean, I, I... I don't know what he was going for. Well, I think what he was going for was an American accent. But it was a little bit, um... Uh, I don't know if he was just trying too hard or, or what. Now... In reality, he did a good job of differentiating it from David, which was his previous android role from Prometheus, and that was maybe what he was going for. Um, but uh, the thing that I noticed about Walter was that he really, really emphasized... His arms. 
Wars. Yes, like, it's oh. that's exactly correct. He, uh, she was just saying that he really emphasized his R's, which was what I was about to say. Um, yeah, he uh, really liked to say these words, and uh, <laughs> uh, which is okay. I mean, that's just an actor doing his craft. I uh, I thought that he did a good job with the role. It was uh. It was very interesting. I will say that if you do want to go see uh, Alien Covenant, do try to see uh, Prometheus first. Because even if even if you don't love Prometheus, even if it's not a fantastic movie, there are a lot of plot points in it which um, lead directly into Alien Covenant. So I would advise that you see that movie first. I'm gonna need to wash wash off my brush. So the more you paint, you'll kind of notice that the uh, that the paint will uh, kind of clump on your brush a little bit as it dries and as you use it more. So uh, if that happens, just uh, well, I'll do it right now. Just wash off your brush and uh, and wipe it off with a with a towel or or with your pant leg or or something, and that can kind of straighten it back out a little bit and then just get right back into it whoo this really is taking a little while oh oh I almost forgot a piece of armor on his uh, right thigh there glad I looked over it Don't be super concerned about uh, getting the paint up into his torso here, because as you can see, that shotgun is kind of blocking uh, kind of where his abdomen is at anyway, but uh, we're going to try to go over it anyway. Alright, let's go over this chest plate here. Hmm. So it looks like he's got kind of a, I don't know how to describe it, he's got a thing on his on his left chest there. Tell you what, let's actually leave that black. Let's try not to get any paint on it, and we'll do something fun with that later. Looks like my brush is starting to get a little, uh, the paint is starting to get a little chunky on there, so I'm going to wash my brush off again. And actually, we're probably going to get some more paint out because my little blob there is starting to dry. Just a little bit more. There we go. We might even need some more after that, I don't know. There's a lot of armor on this guy. Whoop. Bumping into the camera. Okay.
yeah, this guy's coming along, I think. I think he's looking pretty good. All right, when you're trying to get into really tight uh, spaces like this this upper arm here, you know, you don't want to paint the shotgun. Just take your time. I mean, I say that about mini painting in general, but take your time. I do say that uh, one of the things that helps me out quite a bit, I mentioned this in previous videos, but I'll, uh, I'll really hit it home, and that's that um, rest your hands on the corner of a of a desk or a uh, of a coffee table or something. I'm doing this on my coffee table right now, and uh, yeah, it'll just uh, it'll just kind of help calm your uh, your hands and calm your nerves, and uh, you'll you'll have an easier time with it, and uh, and I think you'll you'll enjoy yourself a little bit more. Oh, whoops, that's the shotgun that I just painted right there. That little point there, I think that's supposed to be the butt of the shotgun. Oh, well, that's okay. I mean, everybody makes mistakes. I make mistakes from time to time. And, you know, everybody does. I think to insist that we never make mistakes is, is a nice positive way to think of things, but at the same time, I think that... It says more about who you are as a person to just say, yeah, you know what, sometimes, sometimes we make mistakes. And uh, I think that how you deal with your mistakes is, is really what I think is the important thing to deal with. If you just say, yeah, sometimes we make mistakes and you just accept it and you move on and you learn from them, then uh, I don't think it's really going to matter in the long run that you make mistakes. I think that's just really human. You know, I think after I finish uh, these armor pieces here, I think I might actually call tonight and just pick this up tomorrow. Because this is taking a little while and it's getting pretty late over here. Now, you're not going to notice whenever I, uh, whenever I edit this thing together. I'll just pick up immediately where I left off, but uh, I'll just contemplate what to do when I go to bed here soon. And because the battery on my camera is starting to get low, I didn't charge it fully whenever I, uh, whenever I started recording this, and that's probably something that I should have thought about, but, uh, oh well, you know, we live and learn. Whenever you go over the fingers, make sure you do each finger individually. Don't just go over the whole thing like that. Go over each line carefully. All right. And you know, with that, I think where I'm, I'm actually gonna call tonight now I'll pick this up tomorrow morning so you're not gonna know the difference but uh, 
let this kind of you know be kind of a baseline of what you're looking for if you're just wanting to go over all the basic armor pieces at first and you don't have to use this color you can use um, you know another another kind of color just make sure that the first one that you use so like here we're using gray if you want to do another color just make sure that uh, you use a darker color uh, than what than the color you actually want to use because again what we're looking for here is going to be more of a white but with this gray we're going to start with a gray and then we're going to dry brush some white over each uh, over those armor pieces so it'll look a little bit more white but um, I'll be back in a little bit Alright, well I'm doing some time traveling right now because um, some of the files on my uh, on my camera got corrupted and I actually lost uh, some video content there, so I'm sorry for that, uh, but I'm zooming ahead a little bit, or you know, get, jumping ahead a little bit here. What I did was I finished uh, all the armor pieces here. I think uh, what you didn't see me do was the, uh, was the helmet, basically, that was pretty much it. And then we dry brushed some white all over uh, all the uh, the armor pieces and that just uh, that made them have a little bit more depth there uh, As you can see I left you know the the inner line still black, but uh, yeah the next thing that I did the next thing that I did were, were the uh, were the um, uh, The magazine <laughs> man I think for that shotgun, we're just going to do a basic uh, honed steel. So we're just going to take this honed steel color here. And we're just going to dry brush that over the gun. Yeah, we're not going to worry about super huge details with the shotgun here, but I think as long as we give it that metallic kind of look, then I think it will be fine. That's the thing is about my paint jobs is that I don't do super fantastic, high detailed wash thing. Um, I just do really, really basic things, and... Uh, as long as you're careful and you do your your sort of like basic techniques well, then I think you'll crank out some uh, some pretty decent paint jobs. You know, it's just it's just all about patience and loving what you do and being careful and just having a good time. And I think that as long as you do that, I think you'll be all right. I'm gonna go over this uh, this back here. When I went over the butt of the uh, the shotgun earlier with the uh, with that gray paint. But that's okay. There we go. Uh, that looks pretty good. I think that'll be fine. All right. And I think next up, I want to do those gun pouches or those uh, those magazine pouches. So we're gonna use this uh, this earth brown color. This is a nice sort of just well, it's a it's a dirt brown, I guess. Just a dirty brown color. Don't need very much. Oh, and I didn't say this earlier, but the brush, the brush that I was using for dry brushing, it was my Master's Touch uh, shader here. Shaders, uh, it's a, a two brush. Uh, shaders are, are kind of, um, are really thin, but they're long. Uh, so you can get a lot on the, uh, on single flat surfaces there, uh, which is, which is really good and handy for dry brushing. I'm going to go back to my, uh, to my regular, you know, 12-0 round here. Uh, and we're just going to use that when we're going over the magazine pouches. Okay. Okay, and I think we've got uh, the pouches there, at least the base coat of the pouches there. 
Next up, we're going to dry brush a uh, leather brown color over it. That's uh, this, this leather brown here. And uh, that'll help to give it a nice, uh, nice leather brown color. We are going to go back to our uh, to our shader here because that's the brush that we like to dry brush with. Okay, and then just really lightly go over the pouches there. With uh, with these pouches to the right, go over, go across them like this. Don't go down them because of the uh, the little line dividing them there. If you get paint in there, uh, in that little line, then it then it's going to lose the depth that you're going for by dry brushing over it. And then with this pouch, actually make sure that you go down it instead of over, because the really prominent line there is that uh, that sort of uh, horizontal uh, line separating the sort of top flap from the bottom pouch itself. And that's the line that you want to accentuate. There we go. I think that looks pretty good. You know, honestly, there isn't much more that really needs to be done with this Mini. So, I think what we're going to do is we're going to do something to bring out those boots a little bit more. Mm. The next thing that I did were, were the... Uh, were the um, uh, the magazine... <laughs> man. The, uh, the, the magazine holsters and the pouches there. Although, that might be on one of the other... Uh, that might be on the other file that uh, didn't actually get corrupted. I think I think all you actually I think all you didn't see me do um, was the rest of the armor. Uh, but I'm pretty sure you saw me do the shotgun, which I just used a hone steel, and then I did the, the pouches there. So we're gonna move on from there. I want to do something with um, with the shoes, but I'm not quite sure, or with the boots, I guess. But I'm not sure what. I think let's just get kind of weird, I guess, and. Uh, I don't know, yeah, let's just get kind of weird. We'll uh, we'll actually just use the the steel color. Let's just go straight up steel. You can kind of I'll, I'll use this as a uh, as sort of a frame of reference so you can see what um, fully painted uh, steel looks like compared to uh, um, when you dry brush it on. Um, I traditionally will dry brush steel colors over black colors, and I won't do just full. Uh, I won't just fully paint, which is what I'm doing right now, uh, steel onto uh, onto a mini because that tends to um, it's just a little bit too much. Um, there, there's no depth to it, and uh, it can make it a little, little, little weird, a little distracting. I'm gonna break my rule a little bit here just so you can see the difference, but this will also just kind of, you know, it'll be a little bit different from the rest of the mini. I didn't want to just do, you know the gray and white, which is what I did with the normal armor pieces. I thought I would do something a little bit different. But yeah, those are, uh, those are those thrust boots, I guess. Double jumpers, we'll call them. Because in the game, you can double jump. There we go. That's just something else that we can do with uh, with the boots there. All right, and I think the next thing that I'm going to do is that one chess piece that I was talking about earlier. That that goofy chess piece that uh, we just don't know what to do with. I think we're gonna I think we're gonna have some fun with it. And we're gonna go over uh, that with this antique gold color. We'll give it a little bit of a gold color. I don't think that's on the actual um, uh, the actual uh, game art for for the uh, for the character, I guess. But uh, that's okay. You know, it's on the mini and it's not on the picture there, so we're gonna we're gonna have some fun. But uh, we're just gonna really lightly dry brush this antique gold color over that. 
be careful when you do this because that, that thing really, really is in the chest like that. So it might be kind of hard to get to, but just be careful. You know, you can do it. It's, it's, it's not a big deal. Oh man, it's hard to get into from below. There we go, I think that'll work out. That, that gives it a little bit of its own kind of look. You know, I think to be honest, we're we're um we're kind of kind of almost done. I think we're really just gonna do some last minute uh, nice details here. Um, so let's take this. Uh, so let's take this blood red color here. It's a really nice bright red, uh, and we're gonna use that to sort of go over the uh, the trimming on the armor because uh, he does have a sort of um, white and red uh, armor design. Okay, so let's go back to uh, my regular brush there, and let's see, I think that there's some trimming on the collar here. Oops. Had him out of frame there, sorry about that. You know, I think I kind of want to just do the sort of corners of the armor here, so we're just going to do... That. But yeah, the, the thing about uh, doing the trimming here is, um, you know, it's just the same as, as everything with painting minis. Just take your time with it. Don't uh, don't glob over the entire armor pieces. If you make it look like trimming, that gives it, uh, you know, by just going over corners and stuff like that, that just gives it its, the, uh, its own unique sort of look. We'll just do the same thing to the other side here. You know, I've spent a lot of time talking about uh, Doom and how much I like Doom, and, you know, I've even made, uh, you know, a couple of these videos now, too. I've made, you know, one of the imp, and I made one of this guy here. But I don't think I actually talked about the Doom board game, which is what, uh, which is where these guys came from. Well, you know, I, I think it's okay. Um, it's a, it's a decent game. It's got some, some nice, solid, uh, mechanics. Nothing really too complicated or crazy. Um, but, you know, honestly, I, I think I expected a little bit more from it. It's still good. I still enjoy it. Uh, I mean, it's Doom, so obviously I'm gonna, I'm gonna be all about it no matter what. But, uh... Yeah, I don't know. I kind of wish that they focused more on uh, a little bit of a, of a story element in the board game instead of just focusing entirely on mechanics. Um, which there's nothing wrong with, I guess, but, uh, you know, that's that's just my humble opinion. Well, I don't know if you can hear in the background, but my dog is freaking out. I think I'm going to need to take her outside. I'll be right back. Okay, and we're back. Sorry about that. My my dog, when she needs to go out, she needs to go out. <laughs> you know, when you gotta go, you gotta go. But, uh... Oh, I don't even remember what I was talking about before this. Oh, and you know what, though? I did, um, I did want to give a shout-out to a uh, YouTube user, The Black Spiral, for uh, requesting that I do a, uh, that I do this mini. I guess uh, I guess he's been um, 
uh, working on his own Doom minis. So he kind of he he asked to see what I did with one of the Marines. So uh, yeah, this this one is, this one is going out to uh, to the Black Spiral. Thanks for uh, thanks for the request. I do like to say if anybody does want to see any uh, any particular type of video or anything like that. Uh, let me know in the comments, and uh, I'll see if I can actually get it done. But yeah, right now we're just kind of, you know, getting the, the red trim on the armor here. It doesn't really matter what you do as long as you're consistent. So, like, you know, as you can see, I'm getting some designs on the knees here, and I'm just making sure that the the ah, I'm just making sure that the designs are even on each knee. It's really all that you need to concern yourself about. You know, just go, uh, just go for symmetry because I think that uh, that's the thing about uh, about this mini is that uh, it is it is uh, a very fancy suit that I think is pretty symmetrical. You know, apart from that weird gold armor plate thing. <laughs> but yeah, you can do whatever you want with all of the uh, with all the red, all of the trimming. If you want to do entire armor pieces, you can go right on ahead and do it. I like to do uh, I like to do kind of minimalist designs, so I don't like for uh, I, I I don't want the red to be too prominent. But if you wanna if you wanna really go crazy and really just put as much red onto this thing as you want, you know, by all means, go ahead. But I think I'm just gonna do a really basic thing here. All right. Well, you know, I think that that's really all that I'm feeling with uh, with this guy here. I think, uh, you know, I think we're pretty much done. I think the last thing that we're gonna do is a matte varnish. I'm just gonna take a, a varnish here. I do like to put these on uh, on plastic miniatures, especially uh, especially if they're Reaper Bones minis, uh, which is not the case here. But uh, that soft plastic really does. Um, tend to let the paint come off of it really easily. So we're just gonna take a really nasty, messed up brush here, and we're just gonna use that. This uh, this stuff does look kinda nasty at first. It looks like this sort of, you know, milky white uh, sort of substance, but as long as you apply it evenly around the entire miniature, then, uh, then it'll turn out pretty good, I think. Yeah, I do like these uh, these varnishes because uh, it doesn't just add a layer of uh, protection onto the miniature, but it also um, it also kind of helps to blend all the colors together a little bit, or just it, it tends to bring everything together a little bit. I think it it uh, looks a lot nicer. I guess you could call it kind of like a wash, but uh, you know this is this is just a clear wash that I'm putting all over the whole thing. You know, I want to do something else with that eye though. Because, I don't know, for some reason I feel like the center of that helmet, uh, it really stands out. And I want to do something, something nice and bright, something that stands out. I don't know, yeah, let's, let's go crazy. Let's, um, let's take this, uh, let's take this sun yellow color and we'll, uh, we'll make him a big, bright cyclops. Alright, tell you what though, I am going to go to my really itty bitty tiny detailed brush here. This is my, uh my 18-0 Master's Touch Spotter Brush, and I'm just gonna use that to uh, do that eye. And let's do uh, the same thing on, uh, on the back here, these little dots. I imagine those being like uh, being like lights, and if we do this sort of yellow color there, that'll help to uh, make him look a little bit more like lights coming out of his back. All right, and uh, I think that'll do it. That's uh, 
That's Doom Guy Alpha from the Doom board game. Uh, I think that's pretty much all that I'm gonna do for here. Um, I'll just finish up by saying, uh, yeah, again, if you got any, uh, any other kinds of minis or anything that you'd like to see me paint, just let me know in the comments below, and, uh, we'll go from there. Thank you, everybody, for watching this. We'll see you next time.